can successfully connect to code forces. As usual, Wi-Fi never works in events like this. That's like a typical situation where everybody comes in and Wi-Fi just, just breaks down. So that's, that, that, that's kind of expected. Uh, but hopefully they can, they can uh, connect to their, to their own device uh, to get access to code forces. That's, that's all they need for now. And for those of you, let me, let me choose Kotlin. For those of you who see the Kotlin for the first time, um, Kotlin is just a modern language with a mix of functional and uh, 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 imperative pro programming styles. Uh, like the, the key thing to note me that both of them uh, have not really have much uh, Kotlin programming experience. We just explained them the basics of Kotlin syntax yesterday, and that's basically all their experience with Kotlin is. And so, so you'll you'll see them basically solving contest problem in Kotlin and programming in Kotlin almost for, for the first time here on stage. And Kotlin is designed to... A big deal. It's, it reuses many things from Java, so it will be easier for people who, who know Java. Of course, you don't expect to see here today any kind of idiomatic Kotlin code uh, because um, usually it takes uh, people a month or two to really get up to speed and start like coding in idiomatic style, like using all the constructs uh, to the benefit. So what we're going to see today in terms of Kotlin will be most likely like, uh, you know, C++ in Kotlin syntax. Uh, but it's, it's still going to be fun and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see how it goes when they solve the connections problem. And I'm sure they will. It's going. Still trying to. They will bring. They will bring. Everybody's Wi-Fi is dying. No, no. They will bring a hotspot right now. They will bring a hotspot. Okay. So, so you can connect. Okay. Okay. K K K K. Yeah. K K K. Hello. Yeah. We're still trying to to solve the Wi-Fi problem. So let me explain a bit, a, a little bit, why they're setting up their machine. I will wait for confirmation that they connected. Uh, while they're setting up their connections, uh, let me explain like, the reason why we even created Kotlin and JetBrains. And it was like uh, more than two, 10 years ago in 2010. The reason uh, Kotlin was created is that most of the code in JetBrains uh, used to be written in Java. And in 2010, uh, y you know, it became obvious that uh, y you can do better. Like, uh, the Java has lots of shortcomings with verbose syntax. It's, it was, it's pretty old. Uh, it was uh, developed in 1995, 1997. So, and the age was showing and it was, was hard to scale to uh, really big development. When you write, like in JetBrains, we have millions and millions, uh, tens of millions lines of code in, in many of our projects. So uh, the people in JetBrains who, who started the project felt that they could create a language that would let them uh, be better and uh, programming at scale, writing industrial code at scale, but that also there is a demand in industry for the same language from other developers and uh, that's how the language was started. So the idea was to create a more than concise language in which you can really write a lot of code and navigate easy around. 
um, to remove all the boilerplate from the code and so that you can focus on the essence of the code. So I, I'm getting there good to go. Uh, uh, we also have uh, Mike from Code Forces here, so he'll, he, he'll start the contest for us. Yeah, please refresh the page. Let's let's see. Yeah, we see. Can you? So will rewind start? Andrew, can you do my work? Can you talk? No. no. <laughs> Can you turn on their mics, please? All right. Test. Oh, good. One, two. Yep. All right. So how do you feel before the start? Are you ready to win? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't used Colin in a while, but we'll ho hopefully this will go well. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Well, you did use it a bit, so you had some experience before. Yeah, so yeah, like I've done a few of the Kotlin rounds on Code Forces before, so. Please refresh your your Code Force page. And Camille, this is your like literally first time, like, like contest in Kotlin. Right. Good. So we have one minute to start the contest. Uh, yep. The countdown is going. All right. Good. So there will be six problems as usually ordered by complexity. They're all uh, reused from uh, div three rounds. Uh, uh, I think they, they like starting at 100 points, 200, 300, and et cetera, until 600. Uh, we'll be just uh, race who's first. And we'll see, I'll give you, I'll give you short, uh, when they open and start reading, writing code, I'll give you short, Overview of what the problems are about, so you get get an idea what what they're solving. And I'll try to help them if they stumble into any content syntax problem, because right. again, that's luck, that's right. first time coding for them in content. So, so let's see. Yeah, yeah, getting close. Sweet. Big round of applause. Let's go. Where? Uh, okay, here we are. So, yeah, Re reading problems. Yeah, they they go. So the problem is, uh, so you have uh, three votes uh, from three candidates, and uh, y you have to tell for each candidate how how many more votes you need to add. So this candidate definitely wins the election where winning is defined as uh, having more votes than any other candidate. That, that's how winning in this problem is defined. So, yeah. So. Okay, okay. This is copy and paste uh, from Andrew. Uh, I'm interested to see which strategies they choose. Yeah, each, each of them chose to copy and paste uh, uh, three times uh, the code, but you can also could have solved this with a loop, just reading, because three is kind of a constant here, but there was... Okay, okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, Andrew's running it. Camille still. Still coding, but but also close. Uh, no, need to test it locally. Sorry. 
Yeah, it's not that simple. I can't. I mean, the, the I wonder if she, if if she to hint them what the bug is. Wait, let me let me see what what Camille is doing. Oh yeah, that looks much better. Camille's code looks much closer to what it what, what it needs to be. Oh yeah, Camille's a separate. Yeah. Ooh. It's way easier, so then the, the way to solve this problem is way easier if you just sort three numbers and take the largest and second largest and look at them in a loop. That's the code is way shorter and easier to understand. And let me introduce you the second problem that Camille is uh, ac actually both of them are starting to solve. So you have a number with many digits. In one operation, you can remove a digit, any digit. If you remove the first digit, zeros uh, from the beginning are dropped. And your goal is to make the number divisible by 25 by removing uh, the fewest possible number of digits. That's, that's the goal. And do just write the loop. Uh, this is the N is positive. Um. Okay, so I'm creating a function. Camille is okay. Okay, uh, sending the. The second problem, okay. Yeah, you need to recall the types for function. So S should be string, goal uh, goal should be should be int. Thanks. Yeah. It's string as well. Oh string, okay. Okay, so you decided to check for for twenty five visibility cases. That's one way to do it. Um, square break, it's not rust, it's not rust. You need to, to do square brackets on the ifs. Too much Python. Okay, going good here. What am I doing? Okay. Let's see how Andrew is doing. Size. Uh, yeah, it's length, yeah. Because of that string. Okay, that works. Case checking works too. Okay. Yeah, we see Camille almost there for his four cases. Let's see if it actually works. Now, so now he's going to test it locally. Okay. Nope, doesn't compile. Because, yeah, return type, comma, 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 not, not, not comma, sorry, the, the semicolon, just like semicolon, yeah. Nope.
<laughs> no, that's, that's an important tweak, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you don't need to count the two so you, you, uh, till you leave at the end. This should pass, I think. Good. So let me introduce the next problem, the, the problem C on, uh, on saving uh, that Camille is reading. So, uh, so you have a line, and a line is a length n. You have a cat sitting on one side, and you have a hole on the other side and you have n mice on the line, and the cat, uh, uh, cat and mice alternate their turns. So cat moves to the right every turn, and one, one turn each, one mice can move to the right. Just one mice per turn. If mice reaches the hole at the end of the line, then it disappears there, and uh, uh, once cat reaches a mice, it eats a mice if the mice has not uh, gotten to the hole. So, so your goal is to move mice in such a way as to save the most number of mice from being eaten uh, by the cat. And meanwhile, yes, uh, Andrew is also on top of this problem. So, so we have, have uh, both of them trying to save uh, most mice. So let's see. Let, let, let's see how it goes. Yes, and K, and yes, the array of mice, yes, that's the input. No, it's not Python. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, it's not Python, not, no range, yeah. Okay. Let's see what they come up with. So, Andrew is submitting the second one. Is everyone mass moves to the right by line? If mass reaches the whole clients, can move to the right by line? Let's, and also reading, reading a statement for saving wines. So let's see, let's see Camille's coding. Anybody is selecting us. Hold for data and I can access point of any mice can be loaded. Okay, what is that? That's some kind of agreement. Oh oh good. We have I, I hear by your applause that that Andrew F sold B. So far as they good, they're going really close. Really, really close. Let's see how it goes. So they will be also in C, and I really didn't know what Camille was thinking about. Let, let, let me try to figure out what he's trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, you can just sort it in Kotlin. Yeah, that's right. That's how it sorts. Okay, this, uh, he tries to figure out some kind of greedy algorithm here. Let's see if he's successful in this. Meanwhile, Andrew's starting to. Okay, also. No, just. Uh, Just need to get to here before the cat gets to the hole. Right. 
Other question. Okay. Camille still trying to to debug it. So the cat. Okay. Mm, okay. Let's give them some time. I wonder if if it, it's going to work. Okay. <laughs> I, I I won't spoil the the way I solve this problem, but I I took completely different approach. So let's see if if, if they can debug theirs. Eight. No, it doesn't work. Successful. Let me. Okay. So let's. So while I was watching Andrews, Camille managed to fix it. So let's see this. This one is is straightforward. So you get a tree here, and uh, which is given by by the set of edges, and your your task is to prune the leaves from the tree k times, where k is given in the input. Uh, and this will require using some some data structures to keep graph, et cetera. So uh, let, let's see how much Kotlin help they will need uh, to get uh, the data structures they need uh, to store all of it. So input is simple. It's just a uh, number of uh, vertices in the tree. Uh, and uh, k the number of times you have to trim uh, the leaves from the tree. And then, then there is a, uh, the list of edges. Be, be careful, the input is tricky here. It also has an empty line uh, before each input. Yeah, and it, it's, it, it's, it, it's also multi-test. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, in sports programming. It's, it's it's great to have uh, pre some pre-written code like templates. So yeah, you can uh, you can copy from your template and then which really saves you time in writing. Yeah, the way you read it, just, you just yeah, you just destruct it into ng. Yeah, j j yeah, they're both. Can they have global variables? They're both using the same approach to read their inputs so far. Let's see what they do next. Okay, so Eric is also uh, computing degrees. Great. Okay, so he's going to use a queue. That's a way to solve it. Are we supposed Come, to be yeah. referenced? If you if you want to DFS, it won't. I mean, the graph is, I think, uh, too big for like straightforward DFS to work. Uh, but like, <laughs> like if you want DFS, uh, you, you just need to write it in a slightly trickier way. I suggest you to think twice. Think if you really need DFS to solve this problem, because you're just pruning the leaves here.
in this problem, you just prune in the leaves k times. So k is uh, given in the in the input. All you just do is efficiently uh, implement the data structure, so you can uh, you can you know where leaves are and you can prune it. That's it. Yeah, something like like this thing uh, Andrew is writing. So he's storing just uh, uh, leaves in the queue and then then in queuing uh, new leaves as uh, as he prunes the old ones, which is a good way to approach it. Andrew, your degree has to be has to be mutable list or array list. You you can't modify it right now. You can't even modify the interior of a list. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Capital N case. Looks good so far. Whatever, doesn't matter. Um. Okay, almost, Eric almost done. Good. Yeah, and you are asked what the number of, the answer to the problem is just the number of edges that remain. So you have to prune them k times and just print, uh, print the number of edges that remain. That's, that's the output uh, that the problem requires. There are a few special cases for, for, for empty trees here. Yeah. Just ask me what you're trying to do with tree set. It's called first key, or, or just first, yeah. If you want tree set. First doesn't work? No, the, the, the first on S, first will work. Cotton's first will work too. If it's not empty, the first works just okay. as well. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll think you'll get a time limit on in your submission, and you're, let me disappoint you, but but we'll, we'll yeah. wait. <laughs> exactly one hour. Exactly one issue. I'll see how Camille's doing. Camille's doing well. It's still testing. Yeah, time limit. Yeah. Yeah. It's easy to fix, though. Exactly. That's that's how we fix it, right? <laughs> that's 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 the trick in this problem. So because they say you to do operation k times, but the the number of times to trim can be very large. So you just simulate trimming k times. You'll run out of time in this problem because there are thousand tests, and. Uh, Actually, 10,000, 10 to the four test cases, and uh, I think uh, K is up to 10 to the six. So if you just uh, naively trim uh, K times, you just r run out of time. You have to break if the graph is empty in this problem.
Yeah, Camille solved this just by doing repeat, uh, making sure he's not repeating more than the graph size times. Yeah, you, you need to cast if you're using long. In, in, in Kotlin doesn't have implicit cast, so unlike Java or C++, so if you're not, not even widening and lowering, so if you use int and longs interchangeably, mm -hmm. you have to cast them explicitly. Yeah, and somebody asked in code forces, like, why would you even use a for sports programming language that does range checking by default? Uh, I mean, in my for opinion, it's even uh, for like for industrial programming, that's indispensable in debugging. And as we can see in Camille's example, for debugging your uh, sports programming code is also helpful that you immediately yeah. see where the problem is. Uh, at least you, you see the line where you're, you're getting so out of bounds if something is wrong in your code. Okay, so. No, you can't, you, you can't print like this. It's not Python, yeah. You have to, or you just use interpolation, a dollar. It's dollar A, yeah, dollar B. This uh, will skip an empty line. Your edges. You're get, I, 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 no, I can figure out why you're getting uh, getting out of bounds. You're getting in the input, so you're not so they're numbered from one, but you have. Yeah, my you arrays are n, n plus one. No, I mean this. Yeah, you allocated, but that's capacity. No, a released capacity. You, you, you change see. your. It's not initial. It's not the initial size. You have to do. Uh, you is just allocate uh, interray. Just replace a release with interray, and that will be. Or, or yeah, that's also a way to do it. Okay. So we're learning Kotlin as we go. So, so yeah, if you allocate, it, it's in the, that's most of the collection framework in Kotlin is inherited from Java. So you, you create a array list and stuff by default, they're, they're empty. And the number specifies not the size, their initial capacity. OK, good. Oh, something wrong. Something is wrong here. And while Camille is debugging, uh, let me let me explain you the next problem, uh, the next that that Andrew is solving. So in the next problem, uh, you have a schedule. Yeah, that's that's kind of classic dynamic programming problem. So you you get a day that's length s, h that h hours in a day, and uh, there is a schedule of sleep times where Wo goes to sleep. Uh, so he sleeps uh, for some time and then uh, then goes to sleep, and it all loops modular h because h is uh, the length of the day, and you have to optimize the number of times where he wakes between L, L and R specify the good interval. So where, and the choice here for uh, the player is whether, so he can wake up uh, at a designated time in his schedule or he can wake up one hour before. So we see for T loop is uh, basically two choices when to wake up. It's, specified time minus one or specified time. And, and then uh, you have to basically use uh, dynamic programming to find uh, the optimal sleeping schedule to maximize uh, the number of good times when you w wake up. Andrew is definitely close.
Camille debugging the tree. There are definitely some, some special cases in pruning the tree. For AI by K, half the numbers in the array be Okay. Oh, Andrew is already has already submitted E. Oh, great. E, that was fast. That was fast. That was fast. So the next problem is the last one uh, for, for Andrew to solve. So he actually has chances to finish in time. Oh my God. So that's uh, it's called Hall of Fame. Uh, so there is an array of numbers, and you can pick a number k and reduce uh, any element any number of times by the number k you picked. Uh, your goal is uh, to make at, at most uh, at least half the numbers equal by, by reducing some of them. And the, you have to find the maximum k that lets you do so, or uh, print. Uh, minus one if uh, k can be arbitrarily large. So that's the problem. And a, n, for simplicity, n is always even in this problem. So there's no special cases to worry about the odd n here. It, it's, it's always even. Yeah, and that's where, that's where definitely uh, not knowing uh, Kalkin Standard Library will harm them because it's actually, you can do this check that Andrew's trying to do, like really with the line, one liner uh, in Kotlin, but you have, to, you have to know it's standard library. So to make this check, the Andrew will have, I think we'll have to write some code. Well, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see how he does it. Uh, and Camille deep into the, de into the debugging uh, tree pruning algorithm. Okay, okay. It now works. I hope Camille is done with pruning and... I will now switch to F instead of it. Okay, well, tr try... Yeah, there, E and F, I mean, E is... Uh, t I think they're, they're don't have much code, both of them, but from number of points here, it probably makes sense. Oh no, you have another bark somewhere. Oh no. No, there are some more special cases. Oh no, that's bad. Meanwhile, Andrew is still thinking. Well, let's see. How, so Andrew is thinking on the last problem, uh, which is to maximize k. Yeah, this this the problem you have to think about. In the last problem, you'll have to figure out the algorithm. Well, in the, all of the others, like, it's all straightforward. Mo modular, you know, yeah, module special cases as usual. That's hard. Okay, let's switch to the problem F. It's not bullets, boolean, capital case, Andrew. 
capital case. Thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, in Kotlin, you can do local functions, and local functions are actually really helpful in, I mean, they're helpful in industrial programming too, but they're really helpful in sports programming. The, the fact that you can just, just write function locally and uh, access your, all the other state you have. You have capital A, S. Okay, so so Andrew will be checking uh, checking his numbers module K, okay, but he also need to figure out which modules to check. So be, because you're, you can sum booleans, like you have a boolean expression in for sumo. It's in, it's. Okay, good. Camille is catching up. Uh, Put, oh, that's that's a bad case of Kotlin. Just make, yeah, make something like this. No, actually, put do one to int, hmm? one to one dot to int, and on the yeah, that, that will fix it. But ignore this thread. That's actually the preference. Some sometimes gets the reason for this crazy thing is because literals in Kotlin they they actually special case that exist as both as integers and long and this play, plays trick with overloading when you use functions like some of that can also take both ints or longs. Okay, now, 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 yeah, the trick is to figure out which, which modules to check. So, how much time do we left? We're, we will shorten the time. Yeah. How much time, Mike? How much time do we have? Four minutes, yeah, so there, so we do have chances. For Andrew to finish this one. Yeah, so he'll be he'll be checking all so he's che checking difference between the numbers in array and he'll be checking all divisors of those differences and uh, testing all of them. Yeah, something like this. Var, you have to do var ans. Yeah. Almost done. So let's see if, if that works. It hangs. It doesn't work. Yep. Really close. Tense. Tense moments. Yeah, it looks good. So. Let, let's see if, let's see if that's, if that's, it looks really co correct to me. So let's see if, if it passes the test. Warming me up. War yeah, congratulations. <laughs> so Camille has a few minutes. To, to finish the same one. Let's see. Hanks too, the same problem. 
same bug. I mean, that's, that's amazing. Yep, another bug. Run divisor order. Yeah, they're a special case if they're already, I mean, half of them can be already the same. No, no, that's that. You have to type. The answer is minus one if they're already half of them the same. Then you know, car can be arbitrarily large. It's just the answer m minus one. Yeah. How many more minutes we have, Mike? Mike, T how much time do you have? 45 seconds. Oh my God. Easy. <laughs> you got this. We turn, we turn in submit, you know, or try to compile it at least. Half a minute more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, submit, submit, submit. <laughs> submit. I still have time. <laughs> You're running out of time. Ah. Okay, okay, yeah. 20 seconds. Uh, <laughs> uh, 18 seconds, okay. Hopefully it's correct on, on the rest of this. That's... Oh, yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you very much. I mean, so, I mean, uh, Andrew, how was your experience? It was good. <laughs> I uh, had some hiccups. I, uh, it turns out I don't know how to solve easy problems. Um, but once we got over that, it was, uh, it was pretty smooth. I, uh, how, how would you iterate over like, all pairs, in a, like two elements in, a, in an array? I just didn't want to duplicate iterating over the same element twice. So I wanted to do for i in a, for j in a, but I didn't want to like, I wanted the divide by two. Factor. I did it exactly the same yeah, way. Yeah, it, yeah, it's 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 called step. You do a range called st space step step two. No, no, no sorry. No. Here I'm iterating. I'm trying to iterate over like i less than j in yeah. the array. Yeah. A i less than a j. Yeah. But if I just did for i and a and for j and a. Yes. Then it would uh, it would take twice as many. Yes, exactly. It would I, take the two x overhead. Yeah, yeah. It will take twice as many. So I mean, w I, I usually write it like this too. Like, okay. I mean, I usually when I do sports programming, I usually also do like manual loops, like mm -hmm. like specify like from one to n and from i to to n and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Camille, how was your experience? Mm -hmm. I was what was the bug? What was the bug? I, uh, what was the bug that that that, that got you on? Uh, Indeed, was the last problem. Uh, so, I had a set with kind of hashes of degree comma ID of a vertex, right? I don't know how to create a set of pairs, and sometimes I would first put negative numbers there, so degree of something became zero, or maybe even negative, and I still inserted it back to set. So set had some, let's say, zombie elements. Later, when I changed it, uh, I did it in incorrect order. And if I remove multiple leaves at the same time, in particular, if they touch each other, then like, I would one of them change to minus infinity, but that the other would affect the first one. Uh, so yes, yeah, I just inserted and removed things incorrectly from the set. I see. Yeah, so I mean, that's probably Andrew got a little bit head up because he had a little bit more Kotlin experience. <laughs> so he, <laughs> did, he did you use more things. Did I what? Did you use priority queue? What did you use? No, I just used a queue. Uh, it's just BFS, right? And so you don't need. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you, Makes you, sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he wrote simpler code actually with the yeah. queue. Yeah. 
Yeah. So thank you, thank you all. Uh, yeah. Thanks for participating. It was really fun watching. I mean, uh, really nice coding, and you made it. You made it in time. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. thanks. Should we grab our laptops? Thank you very much for watching, and we'll have next event here. And uh, don't forget to come to our booth and to talk with us. See you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be beginning our alumni talk very soon, so just hold on there. to say hi to everyone. Hello, good to see you. Welcome to Bangladesh Dhaka. Happy to see you here. Um, I'm Veronica from the ICPC Foundation and today we have some special guests for you. We started the ICPC alumni uh, lecture series. Uh, if you didn't see it yet, you can go on ICPC live page and we've recorded already a lot of ICPC alumni lectures throughout this year, and the person who is leading this program is Jelani Nelson, former ICPC coach and uh, currently at UC Berkeley. So Jelani